Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad Wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam Amma ba'd Ahabat fi Allah The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam said Min husn al-islam al-mar'i Tark ma Tarkuhu ma la ya'i The Prophet Sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam said From the Good characteristics of a believer Is leaving that which does not concern him A very important topic I'd like to discuss Is the issue Of leaving those things which don't concern you and as we've just mentioned, this is a hadith of the, of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And in regards to this, the believer is ordered to leave those things which don't concern him or her. And the believer is ordered and commanded to follow those things which have benefit and to seek beneficial knowledge, ilm al nafiyah and the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam used to supplicate for Ilm al-Nafiyah Rizqan Tayyibu, Amalim Muttaqabbilin For an increase in uh, righteous provisions Beneficial knowledge And deeds Which would be accepted by Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala Those affairs which concern us, as the Prophet ﷺ said, if we look at both of those ahadith and many other ahadith of the Messenger of Allah ﷺ, we'll see that beneficial knowledge, knowledge that brings us closer to Allah, knowledge that helps us remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, knowledge of the commandments of Allah and how to practice those commandments, knowledge of how to defend against bid'ah wa kufr wa shirk all of these things are a part of beneficial knowledge because they're knowledge of Islam and knowledge which contains no benefit would be knowledge that leads us to sinfulness shirk, kufr and knowledge of things going deep into matters of the unseen knowledge that we don't have from Kitab or Sunnah even if we it may have a relationship to Quran and Sunnah but we don't have any precedence for it and going deep into those issues without the tools to do so for example the person who asks like from Ahlul Bid'ah and Zandaka who ask about the Sifat of Allah when you see the Asharis for example they make assumptions about the aqidah of Ahlul Sunnah because Ahlul Sunnah for example says Ar-Rahman ala ars istawa as Allah says, Allah says this and then we say that, we affirm that we say the Ar-Rahman, the most merciful, rose above his throne this is what we believe they say, if you say that that means to rise you are saying that Allah rises like his creation rises so therefore you've made a resemblance to Allah, etc, etc. All of that is not beneficial. Meaning that they have now speculated and assumed and made false inference about the aqid of Ahl Sunnati wal Jama'ah. Is that beneficial? La. That leads to zandaka in ilhad of the asma'i wa sifat of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That leads to disbelieving in the true aqidah and creed of Ahl Sunnah, that which the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was upon, that which Allah Azza wa Jal gave us and comes from His divine speech in the Quran, and that which the Salaf of this Ummah, beginning with the Sahaba, what they were upon. They didn't ask those questions and go in and make those false inferences. Instead, they they stopped where the text stopped, the boundaries. Another example of knowledge which has no benefit, knowledge of kufr and shirk. 
So for someone to begin, get into witchcraft and paganism and to explore, not for the sake of, we're not talking about those who have knowledge and who are exploring those ideologies to refute them, but we're talking about for the common Muslim to indulge themselves in learning or practicing uh, so they can empathize with the, the, the witch or that they can uh, have a better understanding of what the uh, people who make uh, use tarot cards or whatever the case may be. That knowledge is unbeneficial. It's not beneficial knowledge. Likewise, there are many things which are not beneficial, but the asl of ilm al-nafi, as the ulama say, is that which has is knowledge of the sharia, knowledge of Islam. So even being an engineer, as although there are some contemporary ulama like Imam Sa'di and other said that since it has a benefit for the community, then it also falls under ilm al nafia So the ulama, they have some differences within this, but regardless, ilm al nafia has to do with knowledge of the sharia, knowledge of Islam, and how to uh, promote Islam and benefit the Muslims. Another important aspect I want to mention, which relates to the hadith, Tarkahu Malayani, leave that which doesn't concern you, is some of our brothers and sisters busy themselves day and night with finding out about the differences between Ahl Sunnah or finding about what so and so has said about this one, what the sister said, so and so said about this one, the brother saw you walking with this one, and the brother saw you at the house of this one and your statement wasn't clear about this one. So you find that some of the people busy themselves, we're not talking about that there's never a, a place for this lap, but we're talking about those who busy, busy themselves, meaning that they give a precedence to this when they don't have the tools to engage in those affairs, or they haven't mastered their own usul and their own aqidah and their own understanding of Islam, but yet they busy themselves. They want to know what uh, this uh, or Muslim organization is saying about this one. There's a conference at this masjid, so they want to know to, how should we refute it, even though ulama of Ahl Sunnah are there. Uh, this one, we want to leave this person, we want to leave this person. They busy themselves, and they haven't mastered Fatiha. And this is, this is very, these are very real scenarios. Or, they busy themselves, they want to know and they want to spread the, the, the uh, situation of so-and-so and warn against this one, but they don't pray properly. They haven't mastered the Salat yet. They are fighting waswas, they're fighting this, they're fighting that. But yet, instead of engaging themselves in that, which is going to benefit them, because their prayer is the asl, the prayer, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Salat fakad kafir, whoever leaves the prayer has disbelieved. So the person who whose salat is is hit, meaning that they, they don't pray properly, then they should be concerned about that which could be the wasila to kufr, to disbelief, to not having their, their Islam accepted, versus knowing about so-and-so and carrying the message of so-and-so or about so-and-so. Likewise, with that ahabat tefillah, which the knowledge that is not benefit and those affairs that don't concern you have to do uh, has a relationship with backbiting in the mima. That if you busy yourself with speaking about individuals without the tools to do so, without the knowledge to do so, without a precedence from the ulama or what have you, then perhaps you can easily fall into riba in the mima because you don't. If you don't have the tools, that means you're obviously you're not probably making a correct hukum, you're not making a correct ruling on individual so-and-so, and on this group so-and-so, and, and what have you, and so forth, and so on. So therefore, you can engage in backbiting in the meme, and we know the ahadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and we know the ayat, Surah Al-Humaza, and other than it, which speaks about those person who carries tales. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was walking by uh, some graves and he passed by these graves and he said and this you'll find in Sahihain in Bukhari and Muslim he said he said verily they're being punished in those graves and they're not being punished for something 
kabir, something that's big. And then he said, Emma as for one of them, the first one, he didn't used to make proper stinja, you know, or, or clean himself properly after using the restroom. So maybe Najasa was on his garment, or maybe Najasa was on himself. Uh, whatever the case may be, they didn't do the proper cleansing of themselves. The Kramukum Allah. And then the Prophet said, And as for the other one, he used to carry tails in order to spread wickedness around the community. This is what the ulama, they explain as far as uh, namima, what it means. So it's to carry wickedness, wicked tails around the community. So for example, if you talk about a, a da'i, someone who calls to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and your niya, your intention, is to spread wickedness. You just kind of want to get that news out. Oh, man, did you hear the latest refutation on so-and-so? Oh, Sheikh so-and-so, he's off it. Achi, Sheikh so-and-so just made tibdi of him. He said he's bringing up new kawaid and new principles. So if you are carrying this news, you just want to spread it because there's no benefit. Maybe the people don't even know the danger of these people and know these people at all. Don't even speak the same language of these people at all. Whatever the case may be, maybe there's no benefit in even bringing that news and spreading that news, but you want to because you just like to get a little evil out there. You just want to get the evil spread around the community a bit. So, then that person falls under the Namima. They're spreading tales about people in order to spread you know, have a little bit more of that wickedness in the community. May Allah forgive us and for in any way engaging in these uh, affairs. Ameen, Ya Rabbil Alameen. So, Ahabatifillah, I say this to be cautious. What we can learn from all of this and from the kalam kathir min ulama'ina, from a lot of statements from our scholars, and I promise you, I'm not making this up. This is what I've heard, what I've said. I've said it in the beards of many different ulama in Medina and other than Medina. And what I learned from them over the long term is you don't lose when you're more cautious about these affairs. But the one who's quick, they lose because they're the one who always has to correct themselves and make a public toba. Oh, I take what I said back about so-and-so. Oh, I need to ask so-and-so to forgive me. Oh, so-and-so, you know, it's spread facade in this whole country. Everybody's making hajar from this one or these groups. It's split up masajid and split up community. The people who are quick, those are the concerns they have to worry about. The one who's cautious, perhaps sometimes if they're too cautious, yes, it can spread, it can be, bring about an evil, but their evil is not like the one who spread the wickedness. So you're always better being more cautious and safe with your tongue and not engaging in things that don't concern you and following up the news, the latest refutation of this one and that one, than you are by engaging in every single uh, uh, refutation and every single uh, dispute between the Muslims. And another last point I want to make, Ahabatifillah, so the people don't misunderstand me because most of the people don't listen. And then that's the first thing. Number two, most of the people don't hear. So that's different. Let's talk about listening and hearing. Listening to give attention to. Hearing, what I'm referring to with regards to hearing, meaning that they still, you can explain it to them clearly, clearly, clearly in their language. But they still come up with a whole different conclusion. Khalid Green said this, so-and-so said this, but they didn't allow for the person, they didn't listen, they didn't hear what the brother said or the sister said. So, Ahabatifillah, what we are not saying, to make this clear, we are not saying that Ahlul Sunnah does not engage in refutations. And we are not saying that even the lay person doesn't need to be aware of some of the refutation. But what we are saying is that people do not need to busy themselves over that which is more important for them and engage in those affairs and engage in spreading and spreading and spreading instead of learning and learning and learning and practice. And I don't know any of the ulama, even some of the ulama that might have a stronger position with regards to this, they busy their students mostly with, 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 with teaching books. Even some of those most outspoken mashayikh, 
that speak about individuals more than others, that they busy them they busy their students with al nafia teaching kutub al salaf. But can you say that about some of our students? Can you say that about some of our du'at? Can you say that about yourself? Ask yourself. And then, most importantly, we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.